హలో ఎవ్రీవన్ ఐఎమ్ కే దేవవాణి అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ మైక్రోబయాలజీ ఫ్రమ్ గవర్నమెంట్ డిగ్రీ కాలేజ్ ఫర్ ఉమెన్ నల్గొండ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఆన్ యాంటీజెన్స్ ఐ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ద యాంటీజెన్స్ ఇన్ ద ప్రీవియస్ వీడియో దట్ ఈస్ అబౌట్ ద ఇంట్రడక్షన్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ యాంటీజెన్స్ కెమికల్ నేచర్ ఆఫ్ యాంటీజెన్స్ ప్రాపర్టీస్ ఆఫ్ యాంటీజెన్స్ In this video, I am going to explain about the specificity of antigens, that is antigenic specificity and the biological classes of antigens. Let me briefly go through about the contents of what are antigens and what is the chemical nature of antigens and the properties. Just summarizing the previous video that the antigens are the substances that induce the immune response when enters into the host and react with the products of that immune response there are two terms immunogens and antigens immunogens are the substances which can elicit the immune response but the antigen antigens are those substances which can react with the products of that immune response based on the immune response antigens are two types complete and incomplete antigens complete antigens are able to induce the immune response and they can react with the products of the immune response that is antibodies and the t cell receptors incomplete antigens are those antigens they do not induce the immune response but they are able to react with the products of immune response uh, they are co also called as haptens haptens here incomplete antigens can be converted into complete antigens by means of carrier molecules again they are simple and complex epitope is the smallest area of the antigen that can bind to the antibody epitopes are also called antigenic determinants epitopes are of two types linear epitopes and conformational epitopes t cells recognize the linear epitopes and b cells recognize conformational epitopes some of the factors that influence the antigenicity include the molecular size chemical nature physical form foreignness degradability dose and route of the antigen and adjuvants so in this video i am going to explain about the antigenic specificity of what is the meaning for specificity here the antigens as explained in the definition they react specifically with the products of the immune response they stimulate the immune response and it reacts with the products of the immune response the products of the immune response are the antibodies or the t cell receptors that are present on the t cells specificity is an important feature of all the immunological reactions and the specificity is related to stereochemical nature that stereochemical nature means here the arrangement of the molecules position of molecules or the arrangement of molecules in space even the stereo configuration it determines the antigenicity the stereochemical specificity was first demonstrated by obermeier and pick and it was later confirmed by land steiner the stereo chemical specificity was demonstrated by obermeier and pick and it is confirmed by land steiner spatial configuration influence the antigenic determinant and the antigenic specificity antigenic specificity is uh, not absolute here the cross reactions occur in between the antigens the cross reactions occur because of the stereochemical similarities that that are present in between the antigens and also sometimes the cross reaction is due to the sharing of the identical antigenic determinants antigenic determinants are, are also called as epitopes so some the cross reactions also occur due to the sharing of epitopes by the different antigens the specificity of tissue antigens of animals 
is considered under these categories such as species specificity, isospecificity, autospecificity, organ specificity and heterophile specificity or heterogenetic specificity. So, first let me explain about the species specificity. Species specificity it refers to the species means tissues in all the individuals of a species contain these species specific antigens. Tissues in all the individuals all the members of a species contain species specific antigens. Species specific antigens generally it shows the phylogenetic relationship. This phylogenetic relationship they are useful to trace the evolutionary relationship between the species and also these species specific antigens are helpful to identify the species in forensic applications. In forensic applications from the blood and seminal strains uh, this species specific antigens are used to identify the species. Next one is uh, iso specificity. Iso specificity it refers to the iso antigens means that these are the antigens present in some of the members of a species but not in all the members of a species. So, the species here are grouped based on the presence of different iso antigens in the members. The best examples for these iso antigens are the blood group antigens they are human erythrocyte antigens. Blood group means that is a erythrocyte antigens with human erythrocyte antigens and another one is a histocompatibility antigen. Blood group antigens are genetically determined and blood group antigens have a importance in blood transfusion and isoimmunization during pregnancy and these blood group antigens are also helpful in, de in determining the uh, paternity cases but of course nowadays these are supplanted by the DNA fingerprinting tests. Histocompatibility antigens are the antigens which are the, the cell determinants and specific to each individual of a species. They are specific to each individual of a species and they are the cell determinants. The best example HLA. HLA is a major histocompatibility antigen that determines the homograft rejection. Human leukocyte antigen HLA typing it is called as a human leukocyte antigen. It is a, one of the major histocompatibility antigen that determines the homograft rejection. HLA typing is a essential before carrying out the transplantation of a tissue or the organ from one person to another person. When the transplantation is to be carried out from donor to a recipient, HLA typing is essential before the transplantation process. Next one is auto specificity. Auto specificity means here auto means self. These are the self antigens, they are not antigenic but there are exceptions. Exceptions are seen in the case of eye lens protein and sperm because eye lens protein here it is a sequestrated means it is a hidden from the cells of the immune system. So, these sequestrated antigens they are not free in circulation or the tissue fluids they are present in within its uh, capsules. So, they are not recognized as a self antigen. Same way the sperm it is not present during the embryonic life which is developed later in the life. 
So, it is a generally not recognized as a self antigens though they are they are the self proteins, but they are not recognized as a self antigens. Next one is organ specificity, organ specificity refers to the organ specific antigens, organ specific antigens they are confined to particular organ, antigens they are characteristic of an organ or the tissue present in different species. Here examples for such organ specific antigens or the proteins include the proteins that are present in the brain kidney, thyroglobulin and lens protein. The proteins of brain, kidney, thyroglobulin and lens protein of one species share the specificity with the other species. The antigens which are characteristic of an organ or the tissues they are present in different species are called as the organ specific antigens. Examples for such organ specific antigens include the complications. The complications are observed after the anti rabic vaccination using the sheep brain vaccines. Vaccines here the anti rabic vaccines are prepared using the sheep brain. When these vaccines are given to the individuals the complications, neuroparalytic complications will be observed. It is due to the brain specific antigens shared by the sheep and a human being. Human beings and sheep brains, they share the organ specific antigens that leads to the neuroparalytic complications after the anti rabic vaccination. And the next one is a heterogenetic or the heterophile specificity same antigen or the closely related antigens sometimes occurs in the different biological species, classes and kingdoms. The same antigen or closely related antigen present in the different biological species, classes and kingdoms. Such kind of antigens are called as a heterophile antigens or heterogenetic antigens. Examples is a Forsman antigen. Forsman antigen is a lipid carbohydrate complex it is a lipid carbohydrate complex present in the animals, birds, it, it is same antigen is distributed in the species, classes and the kingdom. So, animals, birds, plants and bacteria. The Forsman antigen is an example for heterophile antigen which is a lipid carbohydrate complex that is widely distributed in the animals, birds, plants and bacteria. It is absent in rabbits. So, to raise the antibodies to the Forsman antigen that is anti Forsman antibodies are prepared in the rabbits. There are other heterophile antigens which have importance in the diagnosis. Such as a wheel Felix reaction. used for diagnosis of typhus fever and cold agglutinin test in primary atypical pneumonia. The specificity of uh, tissue antigens of animals are considered to be either species uh, isospecificity, auto specificity, organ specificity and heterophile specificity. Species specificity is the tissues in the in all the members of, of the species they contain the species specific antigens that leads to the cross reactions because they, the antigens are from the related species this species specific antigens are useful to trace the evolutionary relationship and they have a forensic application in identification of species
ISO specificity is the best example here is ISO antigens and histocompatibility antigens. ISO antigens are the human erythrocyte antigens based on which the individuals are classified into different uh, blood groups. Histocompatibility antigens they have a major function in the transplantation. So, HLA human leukocyte antigen here uh, is a one of the major histocompatibility antigens that determines the homograft rejection. Autospecificity they are the self antigens generally they are non antigenic but some exceptions are seen such as in the lens protein which is confined to its capsule but it is not found in circulation but it is antigenic and another one is a sperm which is not produced at the embryonic life which will be developed later will serve as also as a also an antigenic organ specificity it's organ specific antigens here confined to a particular organs examples are the antigens that are present in the brain kidney thyroglobulin and lens protein of one species they share the specificity with the other species another one is the heterophile specificity same antigens or the closely related antigens are present or they are distributed in the different biological species classes and kingdoms example is a forsman antigen which is a lipid carbohydrate complex that is distributed in the animals birds plants and biological classes of antigens here depending upon the ability to induce the antibody formation the antigens are classified into t cell dependent antigens TD means T cell dependent antigens, another one is the T cell independent antigens, they are called as TI antigens. T cell dependent antigens, these are the antigens, they require the involvement of uh, T cells. Most of the naturally occurring proteins are the T cell dependent uh, antigens. T cell dependent antigens are captured by the antigen processing cells or which includes macrophages, dendritic cells and B cells or these T cell dependent antigens they can also directly bind to the immunoglobulin receptor that is present on the B cells and now these antigens are processed, they are internalized by means of a phagocytosis and they are processed into smaller peptides which are then expressed on its surface complex with MHC2. Once this complex that complex here it is a tertiary complex the tertiary complex in includes the T cell receptor that is present on the T cells and antigenic pep fragment and which is complex with the MHC2. So, it forms the in antigenic interaction forms a tertiary complex it includes the TCR antigen and major histocompatibility complex 2. Now, the T cells they bind to this uh, antigenic peptide which is complexed with MHC2 and gets activated that activated TH cells now release uh, cytokines and that cytokines again activate the B cells. These B cells now produce the antibodies. T cell dependent antigens they require the involvement of T cells. The T cell independent antigens there is no involvement of uh, T cells uh, some antigens they directly stimulate the antibody production by B cells without the participation of T cells such antigens are called as the T cell independent antigens the antigens which can stimulate the antibody production directly by B cells uh, without the participation of T cells uh, such antigens are called as uh, TI antigens these antigens they react with the B C R B cell receptor based on this the antigens are again T cell independent antigens are two types type 1 antigens and type 2 antigens type 1 antigens include endotoxins they are directly mitogenic mitogenic means they induce the mitosis of b cells division the b cells undergo division and the type 2 antigens they are the polysaccharides the polysaccharides 
which are present in the bacterial cell wall the type 2 t cell independent antigens include the bacterial cell wall polysaccharides and the cap polysaccharides and also some proteins like uh, flagellar proteins bacterial cell walls and capsular polysaccharide and the flagellar proteins they serve as the type 2 t cell independent uh, antigens these type 1 and type 2 they activate the b cells and produce antibodies and the cytokines and they also activate the other cells like macrophages dendritic cells mast cells and also activate the complement so the t cell independent antigens they activate the complement but certain activation is not uh, observed in the t cell dependent antigens isotype switching occurs here isotype switching means the first two the first two immunoglobulins are igm earlier immunoglobulins and later specific uh, antibodies specific to the epitope will be produced but in the t cell independent antigens it is uh, the isotype switching is uh, limited in the t cell dependent antigens immunological memory is present but no such memory is observed in this uh, t cell independent antigens here in the t cell dependent antigens all classes of antibody like um, igm igg iga ige all classes of antibody will be produced but in the ti antigens it is the earliest antibody igm and later igg3 will be produced and the next one is uh, they are easily degradable because to present to the t cells the antigen should be processed it should be phagocytosed so they should be easily digestible or degradable to the tissue enzymes but here there is no requirement of t cells they are poorly degradable the t cell dependent antigens are mostly the proteins but here when it comes to ti antigens they are the as explained they are type 1 and type 2 they are endotoxins and lipopolysaccharides and the polymeric proteins and the polysaccharides that are present in the bacterial cell wall or in the capsule so these are the classes of antigens based on the formation of antibodies ability to induce the antibody formation and antigens are classified into two types t cell dependent and t cell independent antigens these are the differences next move on to the super antigens antigens are nothing but a proteins molecules but these they activate the large number of t cells irrespective of the antigenic specificity and they secrete a variety of uh, the activated t cells again they release uh, cytokines these have a profound influence on the immune system a more number of cytokines will be released uh, by these activated t cells large number of t cells are activated by these uh, super antigens super antigens are the protein molecules that activate the large number of t cells irrespective of the antigenic specificity in the conventional antigen presentation as explained in the previous videos in the cmi the antigen presenting cells which is called as apc apcs are three types they are macrophages dendritic cells and b cells once the antigen is processed into antigenic peptides the mhc2 present on its on the surface of apc cells so this is an antigenic peptide this is an antigenic peptide which should be complexed with this mhc2 and these are expressed outside on the surface of the antigen presenting cells in the conventional method of uh, antigen recognition by the t cells the t cells have the tcr this is called as a t cell receptor that is present on the surface of the t cells it contains uh, alpha and beta fragments this is the groove that is produced by the t cell receptors that fits the groove that contains the antigenic peptide 
this is the conventional way of antigen presentation to the T cells. But in case of super antigens, what happens? This is a T cell which is having the T cell receptor with alpha and beta subunits and antigen presenting cells, antigen is processed and it is complexed with the MSC2 but the super antigen here not it is in the groove that is formed by this complex but it is a, it binds to the lateral part of the groove. It is not in the alpha beta dimer groove of the MSC molecules but it is in the V region. There is a variable region and this region of the TCR, TCR which can alpha and B chains. Super antigens they bind to the lateral part of this groove but not within the groove that is formed. It is irrespective of the antigen specificity these super antigens they bind to the lateral part of the groove that is formed by the alpha and beta chains. The super antigens are characterized by the resistance property. They are highly resistant to the proteases enzymes and they are resistant to the denature by CD4 T cells. So, this leads to the release of cytokines. Whose number of cytokines will be released? One of which is the IL2. This IL2, it causes the uh, massive proliferation of T cells. Again, this IL2 causes the massive proliferation of T cells. It leads to the further release of cytokines. So, these have a effect on the immune system. The super antigens are two types exogenous super antigens and endogenous super antigens. Exogenous super antigens means these are the bacterial super antigens. Examples of such kind Staphylococcus aureus enterotoxin. Staphylococcus aureus enterotoxin it acts like a super antigen this enterotoxin it causes the disease of food poisoning or the toxic shock syndrome another one is a streptococci which release exotoxins these exotoxins also act like a super super antigens it also causes a shock septic shock and rheumatic fever disease. Another one is the endogenous super antigens. The endogenous super antigens they are AES, AGs. They are the cell membrane proteins. They are coded by the viruses. The viruses that are infecting the mammalian cells they have the proteins on its surface particularly viruses enveloped viruses they have the glycoproteins on their surface. In, in case of HIV where AES, AG is coded by a ENV. ENV means envelope gene of a human endogenous retrovirus. These are the super antigens. Endogenous super antigens are coded by the viruses that are infecting the mammalian cells. So, this is an a antigen presenting cells as an alpha and beta subunit to peptide, but that peptide is not specific to the TCR. The peptide is not specific to the TCR. TCR again contains alpha and beta and constant and variable domains. This is the variable domain and super antigen here the endogenous, endogenous super antigen which is bound to the membrane that is the antigen presenting cell. This not in the groove but it is in the lateral part sides that to the side of this alpha and beta domain of TCR this super antigen binds that leads to the massive proliferation of and activation of T cells and the cytokines this uh, T cell activation and the proliferation. So, the super antigens are the proteins that binds to the TCR variable beta chain and alpha chain of MSC class 2. MSC class 2 molecules are present on the antigen presenting cells this is an MSC class 2 molecule to which the uh, antigen should be bound but here the peptide is present which is not specific to the T cell receptor and the super antigen is bound it is on to the lateral part. So, that leads to the massive activation of T cells and release of large number of cytokines which have the physical effects. So, with this the topic on the antigens 
in this antigens what is to know here means what is an antigen and what is an hapten and what are the epitopes what are the different factors that influence the antigen the specificity what are the iso antigens and the adjuvants what are adjuvants these are the substances that increase the immunogenicity example for such uh, adjuvants include alum friants incomplete adjuvant friants component which contains inactivated tubercle bacilli and the super antigens the super antigens again exogenous and endogenous exogenous bacterial and endogenous is viral exogen the bacterial example is uh, staphylococcal enterotoxin and streptococci exotoxin endogenous the examples include hiv and another examples like rabies virus epstein barr virus etc with this the topic antigens is uh, completed thank you for watching this video